right. General Sub Sub Sullivan, General Reimer, great to have you here today. I mean, this is a great day to be a soldier, right? And a great day to be what? An air missile defender in the United States Army. So uh, thanks again. What a great turnout here uh, and, and a privilege for me to, uh, to get an opportunity to talk with you. And of course, I'm, I'm right before General Brooks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few remarks and then I'll do an introduction and bring uh, General Brooks online. And as a reminder, for those of you that have uh, served in Korea before, it's about uh, 2240 by the time I introduce him uh, today. And uh, of course, that's still today, but it's still 2240 uh, this evening. So we appreciate the fact that he's going to be able to talk with us today, uh, given that time of day uh, for him and what he's doing on the peninsula right now. Well, again, good morning. And thanks, uh, Guy, for that introduction. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Guy and AUSA for their continued support to the warfighter and for giving us this opportunity to discuss Army Integrated Air and Missile Defense, a topic of great importance to this community, our homeland, and to our warfighters and partners around the world. I'd like to welcome the uh, broader AMD community and thank you for all you do to support the warfighter. Additionally, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, General Brooks, as I mentioned earlier, who I'll be introducing uh, this morning for the keynote speaker here in a few minutes. So today's forum is a great opportunity to really level the bubbles across the AMD community and ensure we are collectively working towards a common objective. We have experts for across the AMD community here today to participate in four focused panel discussions, and I'm looking forward to a great exchange and dialogue that lays the foundation for the future of our air and missile defense forces. I'd like to start by sharing a quote from our newly appointed Secretary of Defense during his Senate uh, Armed Services Committee testimony. Secretary Mattis stated, and I quote, we need to continue to strengthen our homeland and theater missile defense while working with our allies to strengthen their military capacity, end quote. I think this quote highlights the importance of what we are accomplishing here today. So this morning, I want to take a little time to discuss some key developments that have taken place across the air missile defense enterprise. Bottom line, Last year was very busy and exciting across the AMD enterprise, and I expect this year will also be dynamic as we continue to support the warfighter, partner with our allies, and pursue new technologies. Today's theme, protecting the force and achieving strategic f flexibility in a multi-domain environment, is relevant to the current and future Army IAMD environment and challenges. From a strategic view, the United States is a global power with global interests. We are tasked to maintain a credible capability to project military force into any region while protecting the U.S. homeland, the joint force, and our friends and allies. To do this effectively across all domains, we must move from a regional to a global mindset. The national military strategy acknowledges this imperative. The concept of globally integrated operations is inherent within the NMS and envisions a joint force committed to mission command, seizing and exploiting the initiative, to control the pace of operations and leveraging global agility to increase operational reach. Globally integrated operations, leveraging the joint forces advantages in cross-domain synergy, exploiting advantages in one domain to create advantages in other domains. The Army Air and Missile Defense Force is a key strategic enabler for the Army, the joint force, and the nation, and continues to be globally deployed and regionally engaged. Enemy air and missile defense threats continue to develop in complexity, quantity, and capacity. Potential adversaries have demonstrated a commitment to evolve their missiles, unmanned aerial systems, and long-range rocket and artillery force capabilities. Often these capabilities are the weapon of choice to exert their national aims and hold the U.S., our deployed forces, and our partners and allies at risk. Future adversaries will rely on anti-access and area denial capabilities to shape engagements in their favor. As threat capabilities evolve and capacity grows, air and missile defense modernization efforts and initiatives must continue to avoid adversary overmatch. We continue to work with the Missile Defense Agency, combatant commands, and services to prioritize integrated air and missile defense resources to optimize our capabilities in support of the warfighter particularly in light of the expense associated with traditional approaches and fiscal realities. Consistent with our 2002 AMD strategy and 2015 AMD Waypoint Number 1, 
Our four lines of effort are focused on achieving an end state of defending the homeland, protecting the force and critical assets, and assuring access for our forces. Our forward presence, ability to deploy AMD capabilities rapidly, and our efforts to leverage partner nation capability are integral to achieving strategic flexibility. We currently operate in a complex multi-domain environment characterized by interdependence on space, cyberspace, land, air, and maritime operations. While we're making strides in the right direction, we must continue to develop and integrate space and cyber capabilities into our operations. As an integral member of the Joint Missile Defense Community, the Army continues to pursue enhancements to the nation's missile defense systems, both at the strategic and tactical levels, with lead responsibilities for the ground-based mid-course defense, ANTPY2 forward base mode, integrated fires protection capability, <clears throat> integrated air and missile defense battle command system, Patriot and THAAD. Finally, as we continue to support the warfighter, modernize and develop the future AMD force, we must also maintain a fight tonight focus. Essentially, what trained and ready capability can the AMD enterprise provide to the warfighter now? This is a chief of staff of the Army, General Milley's priority for us. As with planning for future strategies and technology, development, we always have to consider our adversary's advancements. As we always know, the adversary always has a vote. So everyone here is very aware of the threats posed by our adversaries, which are growing more complex and unpredictable, more mobile and survivable, and their numbers are increasing along with their range and accuracy. Numerous countries are developing ground, sea, and air-launched land attack cruise missiles, utilizing an assortment of unconventional and inexpensive launch platforms. Today, nearly 30 countries possess ballistic missile capability. Together, these countries have approximately 50 different variants of ballistic missiles. Additionally, there are 13 new intermediate range and eight intercontinental ballistic missile variants under development. North Korea continues to improve their road mobile ICBMs. North Korea has likely tested ICBM capabilities in recent space launches and continues to develop the KN-08 road mobile ICBM and IRBM very capable of reaching Guam as well as the Aleutian Islands. And we've all heard the most recent threats from North Korea regarding ICBM tests. China, China has developed and tested a hypersonic maneuvering strike vehicle. We're also seeing the use of advanced solid and liquid propulsion technologies, the proliferation of ballistic and cruise missiles, and the development of anti-ship ballistic missiles by China and Iran. Iran expected to expand their ballistic missile development program. Their resolve is demonstrated by their president saying that Iran will not accept any limitations on its missile program and calling for accelerating the production of various missiles. So although the size of the Russian strategic missile force is strike or shrinking due to arms control limitations and resource constraints, development of the new ICBM and SLBM systems is proceeding, and Russia is expected to retain the largest force of strategic ballistic missiles outside the United States. Unmanned aerial systems, UASs, threats continue to increase in sophistication and numbers. Recent, recent conflicts, for example, in the Ukraine, Israel, and Syria have highlighted the growing threat of UAS in support of tactical operations. The Fire Center of Excellence completed a comprehensive counter UAS strategy that this past year, which will provide a holistic way forward for addressing this evolving threat. I expect this topic will be discussed more in detail during today's panels. In the future, our AMD systems will encounter more complex, advanced electronic and cyber attacks. And we will also need to com combat directed energy capabilities that could significantly degrade U.S. missile defense operations. It should also be expected that cyber and electro electronic attacks will increasingly be used as part of our adversary's anti-access aerial denial approach. So to counter these and future threats, we must sustain our efforts in a number of areas, from maintaining our systems to training our AMD force to leveraging new technologies and modernization efforts, all of which require resources. Regarding resources, just a few comments about our current budget environment, and there is some good news. As in previous years, the FY17 DOD budget request and congressional marks on the request recognizes the importance of missile defense. Congressional support remains strong. While the FY17 appropriations is not yet finalized, House and Senate appropriation marks 
as well as the recently enacted FY17 NDA indicates some good news regarding missile defense resources. FY17 budget highlights for essential missile defense programs and capabilities include full requested funding for Patriot MSC missiles, full committee support for the Patriot Modernization Program. The indirect fire capability is fully supported in bo both RTD&E and procurement requests. The Army's directed energy accounts continue to receive strong congressional support. And the FY17 MILCON request for the LRDR, the Long Range Discrimination Radar, a critical capability for our BMDS, is fully supported by the Defense Committees. This is all good news as we move forward to address growing air and missile threats in my role as the AMD Enterprise Integrator. <clears throat> so in my current role, and I've been in command a month, of, as I said earlier, I wear several hats as the SMDCR Strat Commander to include the responsibility of, as of the AMD Enterprise Integrator. As many of you know, in September 2014, the Chief of Staff of the Army designated the SMDCR Strat Commander as the Army AMD Enterprise Integrator to synchronize the efforts across the AMD Enterprise. In this role, a top priority is updating our 2012 AMD strategy along with our AMD partners to include the Fire Center of Excellence, PEO Missiles in Space, the AAMDCs, Headquarters DA, the Missile Defense Agency, and the broader AMD community, as well as assessing force planning requirements, coordinating combat and material development, and assisting with the strategic communications. Also, as the commander of the Joint Force Component Command for Integrated Air Missile Defense, JFCC IMD, I want to ensure the Army's equities in integrated air and missile defense are nested with the Joint Staff's missile defense priorities. So to address these tasks, we continue to be focused on four lines of effort, attaining networked mission command, defeating the full range of air and missile threats, building partner capacity and forward presence, and transforming the AMD force. I can tell you we are well on our way to success along all of these lines of effort, and it is fitting that the panel discussions today are focused on many of these efforts. The future success of our air and missile defense forces relies heavily on the updated AMD strategy to refocus efforts and relieve stress being placed on this vital team. So regarding our efforts to update the 2012 AMD strategy, as many of you know, the inter AMD Enterprise published waypoint number one to the strategy just came out over a year ago. The waypoint was not a rewrite, but serves as a bridging st strategy for a more holistic re review while providing near-term recommendations for possible adjustments. A review of this strategy found the Army is investing in the right efforts now and our top priorities remain unchanged as Patriot, IFPIC, and IBCS. An emerging priority is the reinvigoration of the short-range air defense capabilities within the maneuver force. That the current strategy does remain relevant but needs rescoping and we must be informed by the Army operating concept and the Army campaign plan. It must also evolve from a material-centric to a more comprehensive dot mill PF approach. As an enterprise, we intend to begin development of the next holistic strategy that will incorporate the findings of the Waypoint and the guidance of our senior leadership. So although we are on the right track and investing in the right areas, we still face a number of challenges in regard to protecting the force and achieving strategic flexibility in a multi-domain environment. So here's what the AMD Enterprise is doing to meet that challenge. We're adopting a more holistic approach to IAMD overall to include evaluating both kinetic and non-kinetic op options. In fact, non-kinetic applications are receiving a lot of interest. Leveraging partner capacity to increase strategic flexibility. Assessing new technologies and incorporating them into the AMD fight. And evaluating our forward presence based on mission, threat, and risk, and considering alternative ways to meet COCOM demands, such as forward stationing in lieu of deployments. In recent Senate testimony, the Chief of Staff of the Army stated, quote, readiness is the Army's number one priority. He also stated, quote, the Army Equipment Modernization Strategy focuses on the five capabilities of aviation, the network, integrated air and missile defense, combat vehicles, and emerging threats, end quote. The challenges to sustain the readiness of the total Army AMD force requires constant vigilance and senior leader focus. The operational demand on the Army AMD force, especially the Patriot units, to meet the requirements of the joint warfighters continues to stress the force. 
impacting both current and future readiness, as well as modernization initiatives. With over 50% of our AMD force either forward stationed or deployed, the Army has taken steps to mitigate this stress and restore strategic flexibility. Impl implementation of the Sustainable Readiness Model, an Army campaign plan strategic effort, supported the characterization of the challenge. A recent study on striking a balance between operational demand and modernization led to a number of initiatives, including the activation of an AMD test attachment, the addition of dismounted Patriot Information Coordination Centers, and modernization of AMD, normalization of AMD rotations to nine device 12 month cycles. A major factor in readiness is how we can balance modernization efforts with the operational demand. The Army AMD force finds itself at a critical crossroad as it balances the competing requirements of supporting the current fight while modernizing. The AMD force must maintain these enduring missions and operational requirements while simultaneously modernizing the AMD force to avoid enemy overmatch. The Army IAMD Battle Command System, or IBCS, will establish an integrated fire control network for all Army AMD forces. This modernization effort will impact all elements, mission command, sensors, and shooters across the Army AMD force. High operational demand requires synchronized planning across the whole dot mil PF. The Patriot force must continually modernize through the post-deployment build software and hardware upgrades to avoid obsolescence and to enable use of the most capable missile. The Patriot Advanced Capability PAC-3 MSC missile program is a critical modernization effort that achieved IOC this past year. Last, the Integrated Fires Protection Capability, or IFPIC, with its multi-mission launcher is a critical capability to migrate, mitigate UAS and cruise missile threats in block one, which is on schedule to achieve IOC by FY20, and then rocket artillery and mortar or RAM threats in block two. <clears throat> a step in the right direction in this balancing act will be how we leverage our emerging technologies. There is good news regarding uh, emerging technologies to include directed energy. We have completed extensive work on new systems to protect the warfighter, to include future technologies like our high energy laser tactical vehicle demonstrator, selected by the Army as a science and technology objective demonstration as one of only four Army capability enablers selected. We are working to integrate all components onto a single platform as we move forward with tests and demonstrations. We are reaching towards a 50 and eventually a 100 kilowatt power output of these laser weapon systems and we are also working closely with PEO Missiles in Space and the Fire Center of Excellence to ensure the High Energy Laser Tactical Vehicle Demonstrator platform is properly integrated with other AMD efforts, adding greater flexibility and combined FX. We intend to demonstrate the counter UAS mobile integrated capability during upcoming exercises in the European theater. CMIC is a combined arm solution that repurposes existing programs of record to provide ground-based lethal, non-lethal, counter UAS capability against selected UASs. We also continue to advance the advanced hypersonic uh, program, which could potentially have a significant impact for the AMD enterprise. The advancement of this new, tech, of this new technologies will play a pivotal role in how we protect our maneuver forces. In regards to protecting the maneuver force, short-range air defense is a critical topic with Army senior leadership. The AMD Enterprise is developing a way forward to address the CSA's request to look at ways the Army can add shore ed capability to the maneuver force and also in parallel effort to resource the European Reassurance Initiative, or ERI, in FY18. A simultaneously and equally important endeavor that we are charged with is defending the homeland. We continue to move forward with new developments as we work to defend the homeland. In short, we have made significant improvements in the operations and the mission readiness of the entire ground-based mid-course defense mission. Our operations at uh, Fort Greeley, Colorado Springs, and Vandenberg Air Force Base have seen vast improvements over the, last, over the past year. As many of you know, the 100th Missile Defense Brigade comprised of Army National Guardsmen from Alaska, Colorado, California continue to provide 24-7, 365 ballistic missile defense of the continental United States. We remain on track to increase the number of ground-based interceptors to 44 missiles by December of 2017. 
we are on track to complete the third missile field at Fort Greeley while updating critical command and control software and making improvements to the missile defense complex. We've increased the effectiveness of the GBI fleet by establishing the in-flight interceptor communication system data terminal on the East Coast this past year we're improving operations while enhancing the coverage of the United States. Additionally, we continue to work closely with MDA on further improvements to the EXO atmospheric kill vehicle. Last year's successful GBI test highlighted the capability enhancement to performance with alternate divert thrusters and demonstrated technology to discriminate countermeasures. This EKV test was a significant milestone towards achieving our goal of 44 GBIs by 2017. Another principal contributor to the Homeland Defense Mission is the 263rd AAMDC, which oversees the National Capital Region Integrated Air Defense Mission. The 678th ADA Brigade from the South Carolina Army National Guard activated and assumed this mission this past fall. Our defense of the homeland also incorporates defending many of our warfighters and regional allies across the globe as well. Our regional support to our warfighters and allies is steadfast and integral to protecting the force and achieving strategic flexibility. The Quadrennial Defense Review establishes a priority to maintain a strong commitment to security and stability in Europe, the Asia Pacific region, and the Middle East. In conjunction with our allies and partners, the DOD continues to maintain forward committed Patriot, THAAD, and counter rocket artillery and mortar CRAM air and missile defense units forces in order to enhance our AMD posture while sending a strategic deterrence message to potential adversaries. The scope and quantity of these deployments result in a highly deployed and stressed Army AMD force. We must seek to balance today's operational requirements with shaping the force to counter future challenges. Our efforts must also include the critical modernization of our AMD force over the next five years. So let's talk a little bit about Europe. 10th AAMDC is conducting joint and multinational operations in support of the European phased adaptive approach. As you know, EPAA successfully achieved operational capability in Romania this past year and, ex and expect to achieve operational capability in Poland by the end of 2018. In regard to the European Reassurance Initiative, or ERI, AMD equities are focused on short-range air defense to the maneuver force. We are developing plans to provide Avenger systems for European APS by FY18, which consists of both active and reserve component equipment sets. Shifting to the Pacific, the 94th AAMDC continues to work with partners in the U.S. PACOM, U.S. Northern Command, and U.S. Strategic Command to review and improve our capabilities in the U.S. PACOM area of responsibility. In addition to the deployment of the Terminal High Altitude Air Defense, or THAAD, battery in Guam, and an additional forward base, or forward base sensor in Japan to bolster our regional and homeland defense capabilities. This past year, we completed forward stationing of uh, Guam for, THAAD, for the THAAD battery to reduce the deployment turbulence and create more strategic flexibility in the THAAD force. We are also well into planning and execution of uh, forward stationing of THAAD battery in Korea, as we all heard as recently as this morning and yesterday, and I'm sure uh, General Brooks will uh, discuss it uh, during his portion of having uh, deploying THAAD to South Korea. In the Middle East, 32nd AAMDC and the CENTCOM AOR made significant progress in improving international training and education bases to ensure our forces are able to work, train, and fight alongside our partners. Our AMD forces have continued to expand air defense, combined training opportunities at home and abroad, and have improved organizational foreign disclosure expertise. Our, our partners are also increasing in capability and capacity as recent foreign military sales successes include agreements between the United States and Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia to train our partner nations on the Patriot weapon system. Additionally, foreign military sales agreements are in place between the United States and UAE for acquisition and training of the THAAD weapon system. The next topic I'd like to touch on a bit is building partner uh, capability, which I feel underpins our overall success in our air missile defense efforts. Training is an integral part of our IMDA operations and success and continues to play a significant role in our efforts to build partner ca capacity. 
So the bottom line, we must find ways to better integrate our coalition partners into the fight, especially as we see more and more AMD foreign military sales cases being pursued by partner nations. This, this is, in fact, very good news for the AMD enterprise. As you know, Nimble Titan is a multinational missile defense series of policy level experiments and war games with over 28 international participant nations and organizations. The two-year campaign is focused on expanding international partnerships and missile defense cooperation and as a means to explore and inform the development of strategic policy options and military concepts of operations for combined missile defense. While a campaign in previous years primarily focused on strictly missile defense, at the request of many of the international partners, we have expanded the scope of Nimble Titan 18 to focus on integrated air and missile defense. This provides many of our participant nations an opportunity to explore potential implications to policy and planning given the more complex and likely threat of integrated attack from crews, UAV, and ballistic missiles. I want to highlight the many joint and combined exercises in, a, in, in and amongst the Nimble Titan series taking place across all of the combatant commands and AORs, such as the regional air and missile defense exercises in CENTCOM, UCOM, and PACOM. For example, the Tobruk Legacy exercise is a premier IAMD event in UCOM and was a tremendous success this past year. This year's exercise in July of 2017 will build upon the recent successes and expand its scope to include 21 allies and partner nations, as well as the Mississippi National Guard and 32nd AAMBC. We're also leveraging the JFCC IMD to conduct joint BMDS training sessions with combatant command and component staffs to address missile defense, allied integration and combatant command AORs, left of launch considerations, non non-kinetic considerations and multi-domain cyberspace activity. JFCC IMD just recently conducted a joint BMDS training session with U.S. STRATCOM and U.S. USERPAC senior leadership, which we found was a resounding success and we made a lot of money working with each of those combatant commands and ASCCs. Through events like these, we have already made significant improvements in integrating allies into the BMDS architecture. One way that has proven to be successful in our endeavor is to build partner capacity through participation in various exercises. Last year, IAMD forces participated in nine IAMD-specific exercises that included participating units from CENTCOM, UCOM, NORTHCOM, PACOM, and STRACOM. We had partner nations such as Canada, Japan, the United Kingdom, and other NATO countries participate, leveraging not only our AMD community capabilities, but our space capabilities in strengthening our partnership is crucial for the future multi-domain battle. Central to operating in a multi-domain environment is integrating and leveraging the space capabilities as they are integral to the IAMD success now and in the future. The United States Strategic Command Commander, General John Hyten, recently stated the following regarding space capabilities. Quote, space is fundamental to every single military operation that occurs on the planet today. From satellites to global positioning systems, space has tr transformed human life and the military in the 21st century, end of quote. Our enterprise relies upon the advantages provided by space capabilities and space applications to fight and win. Space capabilities and space applications enable increasingly precise and timely fires, facilitate efficient and effective movement and maneuver, enhance command and control, and provide secure communications over extended distances in remote areas without modern infrastructure. These critical advantages increase in importance as potential adversaries become more capable and lethal. The space domain continues to become more contested, degraded, and operationally challenged. Adversaries will challenge U.S. strengths such as air and maritime superiority and degrade critical capabilities by limiting access to space, cyberspace, and the electromagnetic spectrum. In order to mitigate adversary threats and create future conditions for overmatch, the Army will increasingly leverage, enhance, and protect the advantages provided by space-based systems across all joint functions and domains. Space-enabled capabilities are essential for missile defense operations, everything from communications, pre precision navigation and timing, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and early warning, which are all dependent on space-enabled capabilities. 
Through the Joint Space Operations Center, we routinely coordinate and collaborate with the Joint Fun Functional Component Command for space to ensure resilience of space architectures that forms the backbone of the missile defense joint kill chain. In support of the JFCC, our strat continues to provide ballistic missile early warning with various theaters of operations. The 1st Space Brigade Joint Tactical Ground Station, or JTAG's detachments, under the tactical control of STRATCOM, provide space professional soldiers who monitor launch activity and other infrared events. They provide essential information to members of the air missile defense and operational communities. Our JTAG detachments are four deployed around the globe, providing 24-7, 365 dedicated assured missile warning to U.S. STRATCOM and GCCs in support of deployed and forward-based forces. We continue to optimize this capability, and this past year we gained support from the government of Italy to relocate one of our JTAGs in Europe. A vital part of protecting our space capabilities is through cybersecurity. So let me change, uh, transition to cybersecurity for a minute. As I mentioned earlier, the cyber threat will continue to be, become more complex. Cybersecurity is critical to IAMD, and we continue to work closely with the Missile Defense Agency to secure our systems and networks to prevent de degradation in operations. We also have established a cyber integration cell within SMDC to coordinate, prioritize, and synchronize our cyber efforts and operations. Our air and missile defense systems and soldiers operate today in a cyber contested environment. The advent of a rapidly evolving dynamic threat, including the convergence of cyber and electronic warfare, possesses challenges to our nation's most critical missions unlike we've ever faced before. We must continue to aggressively address this threat to achieve mission assurance. These threats span across the life cycle of our AMD systems from development to operations and support. We need to, we need to begin to bake in the cybersecurity up front and early in our design phase. The material development community must clearly treat cyber as a design consideration. In operations, we have to provide our operators with the tools to detect and fight through a cyber attack. In sustainment, we have to rapidly deploy security measures to our fielded systems that degrade and deny cyber attacks without degrading our systems. We must all remember, and I continue to tell the soldiers within my command, that we are in fact all cyber warriors for 24-7. So I think we keep that in mind as we, as we look to, forward to that. So in closing, today's theme, protecting the force and achieving strategic flexibility in a multi-domain environment is relevant to the current and future Army IMD environment and challenges. Consistent with the AMD strategy and waypoint number one, the AMD enterprise continues to make strides in critical areas to include adopting a holistic approach to integrated air and missile defense, maintaining readiness, balancing operational demand and modernization, leveraging emerging technology, integrating air and missile defense into the maneuver force, maintaining a forward presence and leveraging partner nation capabilities, and always enhancing homeland defense. We are also making progress in terms of integrating and leveraging space and cyber capabilities. So as always, we must keep the protection of, protection of our homeland, our warfighters, and that of our allies and partners at the forefront. Our trained and ready soldiers are the very best. They continue to operate from remote, globally deployed locations and remain on point to defend the homeland and protect the force and critical assets around the globe. Our soldiers continue and remain some of the most talented, resilient, and professional soldiers I have ever served with in my career. We owe a large debt of gratitude to the sacrifices of these amazing soldiers and their remarkable families. Again, Today, it was, uh, it's great to be here with all of you today. It is a great day to be a soldier. Army IMD is a dynamic environment, and every one of you has an important role as part of this enterprise, and I look forward to working with you as we take AMD into the future. As always, on watch, always ready, ever vigilant in the defense of our great nation and our partners and allies. Thank you.